Welcome back to another segment of Terminating Low Voltage Cables. I'm Ron with Ideal, and again, welcome to my shop. Now, this is part two of working with UTP cables and uh, a little bit about the do's and don'ts about how to use them. Now, in part one, we covered a lot about you know, the twist and repairs and, and uh, uh, the different categories of cabling that are out there. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the construction of the wire as far as uh, how the National Electric Code could, uh, looks at it, and then also uh, a little bit about you know installation tips and things like that. Now. Uh, we are always very concerned about how the, uh, how the wire burns in a fire and because the amount of smoke it puts out can be very toxic to us and it can be very thick as well because you can't see through it so we don't really don't want that. And so the National Electric Code uh, uh, actually uh, has some designations here for us to look at. Now when you look at a piece of cattery uh, wire and you pick it up, uh, you know one of the first things you might see when you look at the cabling, in, in this case this wire here gives me so many feet this is 884 feet and you'll find a lot of your cable manufacturers or when they make the wire today they'll sequentially mark the cabling so in this case this tells me there's 884 feet left in the box which is nice to know if you if you have a wire in a box and of course then it goes on to say what it is as far as category rating and so those kinds of things it gives the UL or the ETL uh, 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 people who actually tested the wire and rated the wire for you it talks about the gauge and the brand and things like that now one of the things else you'll find on the cable is marked up every two foot along the length of the wire is some letters that you'll see in a combination of letters you might find. And this is the fire rating of the cables. And when you look at the National Electric Code, uh, the first rating they have out there is something called CMX. And now the X is, it means what we call limited purpose. Okay. And um, the CM in this case stands for communications grade cabling. Uh, the X is where we can use the wire, and uh, sometimes you might find it wire rated at MP, and that's called multi-purpose, so it'd be the same thing. Um, <clears throat> but the X, uh, in this case, means limited purpose. And, uh, in many cases, when I see wire like this uh, out there, uh, especially in residential, I might find it in an indoor-outdoor rated cable. It'll have a rating for the indoor portion of it, and then it'll have a CMX, meaning it's limited purpose and it's outdoor. And uh, in many cases, that wire has some sort of a UV inhibitor in it to keep it from breaking down in the sunlight, the jacketing. So, uh, it, outdoor above ground, okay? None of these wires are really meant to go in ground, even though the code book says you can put it in conduit in the ground, uh, that will get full of water sooner or later in a conduit. So, uh, anyway, so the next rating up above this is, uh, uh, oops, CM. G as in general purpose, okay? And so here, uh, CMG is general purpose wire, okay? Now, general purpose wire can be ran behind walls or, or outside of walls, uh, and it can be ran basically horizontally through a building. Um, general purpose wire, if I took a, a piece of it and caught it on fire and then took the heat source away, it basically stays on fire. It can, throughout the length of the wire, burn basically. And it puts out pretty heavy smoke too, so we're worried about that as well. So uh, uh, the code book will let you go two floors with this in residential, but above that we've got to go to the next rung up the ladder, which is uh, riser cable, okay? So now we have called, something called CMR on the wire, and it's, it's riser rated wire, okay? Now, riser can be ran, again, inside or outside of walls, uh, vertically or horizontally through a building, and when we take that wire and we catch it on fire, take the heat source away from it, the flame is supposed to go out with so many inches and the amount of smoke is not supposed to put out is as toxic and, again, as dense as uh, general purpose wire, so it burns slower, basically, in a fire, okay? And uh, that's what you find in most uh, uh, applications you see out there today. And the box will be clearly rated as, you know, riser rated right there on the box. And uh, these ratings are something, again, that your code guys will definitely know about. And uh, the last rating out there is plenum rated wire, or CMP. Now, the word plenum basically refers to anything that handles air in a heating and air conditioning system. So if uh, duct works and things like that. And so, um, if the wire needs to penetrate or go through any place where that wire would have to be in that same area as that air handling uh, uh, device, well then it needs to be plenum rated wire. And you'll find a lot of commercial jobs are making you put in plenum no matter what, just because, you know, safety reasons kind of. And if your wire is three times the price 
of uh, out there, it's probably pulling them rated wire. So be careful out there out, out there buying wire. It could be plenum or riser should be clearly marked on the box. But uh, you'll know it's plenum because uh, the uh, compound that they make the uh, jacketing out of uh, doesn't hold ink very well. And you can actually see it's very kind of faded as far as colors. Well, and that's one way to spot it. And the other one is, of course, the price of the cabling. So. Um, you know, if, uh, again, if you, the only way to get your wire into a room is going through the air ducts in your house, well, then you might want to go out and buy some of that plenum rated wire to do that with, okay? Um, now, the next thing I'm going to talk a little bit about is, uh, you know, how do you install the wire? And some tips on pulling and, and uh, just general ideas as you brought wires through, cable, through homes. Now, first of all, we generally like to be the last person on a job, especially in a residential job. Um, before the walls go up because then we can pick routes that no one else is going to mess with. And uh, so when you're setting up a home or any small job or any job you're pulling, one of the first things you need to sit down is take a look at the plans or look at the drawings and then you can start coming up with some ideas how to route these wires through these buildings and how you might go about protecting that wire in the process of doing that too. Uh, because I guarantee if the wire is, is exposed, it's, uh, it's, it can get damaged or painted or something uh, stupid to it. So. Um, you know, make sure the points, uh, areas that you're pulling wire from, the area's nice and clean. No other trades are in those areas and no one's stepping on your wire or, or doing anything stupid to your cabling uh, during the process of you actually getting it installed inside of a home. So, uh, pulling tension is something that we do worry about with cattery cabling. And uh, when we look at pulling tension, uh, cattery cabling has always uh, been told us to not pull it at any more than 25 pounds of pressure. So. Uh, you know, how do you gauge this? Well, you know, no one actually ever measures it. We assume if you've installed it properly and it passes a certification test, you must have pulled it right. And uh, But we know more damaging cables, though, is you're pulling wire around corners and things like that, you know when you're pulling on it too hard. And uh, you don't want to be uh, doing things like that to the cabling. So figure out pulling stations uh, to go from point to point. Uh, there are all kinds of means of as far as devices to help get around corners and stuff with, but uh, pulling, okay? Now, the other one is bending and, and the kinking of cabling. And, you know, when you the bending radius on cattery cabling has always been four times the diameter of the wire. And, you know, a lot of your cattery 5E, your Cat 6 stuff uh, will be somewhere around a quarter inch of diameter. So four times that basically is an inch, and that's the diameter of the radius of the bend. So if that's the radius, the diameter of, of the circle we can create is two inches, okay? So that's about the tightest they want us to bend this wire. And uh, kinking of cable, things like that is not good. Um, however, we'll get, tolerate quite a bit of it. It will, usually most cases. Uh, it's surprising how much uh, kinking of cable and bending that the system actually does withstand. But anytime you deform the shape of a wire, you're messing with the cable's performance, we prefer you just not do it, okay? Now, slack at the outlets. Uh, you know, when we uh, put slack out there, we always like somewhere around 8 to 10 inches of slack uh, above, you know, at the, or 8 to 12 inches, I should say, 8 to 12 inches uh, at an outlet in a room. <coughs> That way we've got something extra we can re-terminate if we have to later down the road. Or, uh, and again, we're going to use a backless box so that we can uh, push that nice and evenly back into a stud cavity. Uh, above it, uh, in you know, ceilings, uh, you know, if you want to leave a little slack up there, uh, you, you know, basically a foot or so is basically what they're recommending today, not much. Um, uh, we don't leave big surface loops like we used to in buildings, okay? Um, uh, right, now, besides that, separation from power, which is obviously a big one. Now, when I look at this, you hear all kinds of numbers and recommendations from people, and I'm going to tell you, the only thing that's law, basically, is the National Electric Code. Now, the NEC basically says two inches, and we want to maintain a, an easy two inches away from all electrical devices, and if we're going to cross it, cross it, you know, at, at uh, right angles, don't run, you know, side by side with it, uh, and kind of thing, but it's only two inches, and anything else you hear is basically a a recommendation by somebody and uh, when we look at the residential standards uh, many of those like the 570 B uh, would also say two inches on UTP cabling. Um, it's interesting they, they say six inches on coax because uh, actually uh, 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 balanced cable like UTP is very good at resisting noise. Now uh, if you look at some of the commercial standards you'll see 12 and you'll see 24 inches as well so uh, really, the best answer you give people is as far away as you can get it would be the best thing you want to do, okay? And um, 
when we look at routing the cable and we support the cabling, um, you know, up at drop ceilings, we'd say every four to five feet, you'd want to support the cabling with uh, some sort of a, you know, J hook or whatever it might be. Uh, so every four to five feet, again, worry about your routing your cabling. Uh, when you're using cable ties, don't cinch them down so tight that they can cause damage uh, to the cabling. Uh, you might even uh, alter the, uh, how often you actually cable time doing it every 12 inches or every two feet is not always a great idea. Uh, start separating some of those kind of things. Uh, actually, in a lot of your uh, Cat 6A stuff, we're saying to unbundle the wire slightly as we uh, install it as well because actually the, this bundling is causing problems in 6A. But, uh, uh, but support it properly. Again, make sure you don't do any damage to the cable in the process. And you know, like Romex staples and things like that, you might still see people using those. It's not the brightest of ideas. Um, if anything, you hit the wire half the time. And uh, uh, if you want to drive the staple into the wood member, then cable tie the wire to it, well, then I'll, I'll go with that. But uh, again, don't damage the cable in the process of, of installing. And of course, all these systems, make sure everything is grounded properly as well uh, throughout that system. So. That kind of takes us through the second part of uh, UTP wire and a little bit about how it's manufactured and engineered and some things to think about when you buy it and uh, start pulling and installing those cables. So, again, I'm Ron with Ideal. Uh, thanks for coming to another segment, and uh, we'll plan on seeing you the next time.